So welcome to another Flood of Flow crash course and this is season two and I'm super excited about this one because we are going to build a mobile application in this particular series. So if you are new to Flood of Flow and you're just trying to find your feet then this is a perfect course for you. And of course that does not mean that the previous season that I created, please do check the Academy the season one is perfectly suitable as well if you are looking to learn a flood of flow. So please do go check back and watch that as well. But you don't need to have watched season one to see season two. This is not a Netflix drama. This is all about learning a flood of flow. So what we're going to do in this easy to follow series is create a brand new mobile application in Flutterflow. Now, I'm going to remove kind of all the complexities from this particular application. We're going to focus on building a local database type application that you can get up and running with super fast. And it's called a goals tracking app. Now, people who have watched my content previously, who have watched my five hour course would have seen something very, very similar to that. But this is a bit of a version two, a bit of an upgrade. And of course, we're using a lot of the new features in Flutterflow as well. So it's beginner friendly, it's walkthrough style, it's multi episodes, you can sort of uh, pick up and put down whenever you need to. And of course, we are going to progressively build together, which is really important. It's the way that I like to uh, sort of teach people how to use a product such as Fl a flood of flow is to take it nice and slowly walk through. So if you like that learning style, then this is the video series for you. So what are we covering then? So here is some fundamentals that we're covering here and we're touching on some of the ones that we did in season one and we're going to kind of replay those again in this particular season, obviously using and building a new mobile app. But of course, we're looking at pages and components. We're going to look specifically at the database side as well. We're certainly going to be covering a lot of that in this particular series. Of course, we're going to be using tables and dialogues and we'll be creating and crafting SQL queries to kind of do all of the data manipulation that we need. So, of course, you do not need to be a database expert. It's with the beginner in mind as well. So just follow along and I'll teach you how to use all of that power inside Flutterflow while we build this application. We can look at reusability. That's going to be quite important in this particular application. We're going to want to kind of reuse particularly parts of our UI. So of course, it means that we can build in one location. And as we make changes to those particular reusable elements, and of course it applies then throughout the rest of the application as well. We're gonna be doing some more in animations in this particular video as well. So that's certainly something that is gonna be useful if you're sort of trying to add a little bit of, uh, you know, a nice sort of look and feel into your application. And of course we're gonna look at state as well. There's gonna be a reasonable amount of use of using state. So whether this like page or app state variables, then this is the series for you to learn more about that. And we're gonna to touch on on very briefly on using some functions, a really, really, really small amount of little bit of programming code there. But again, literally almost a one liner. So you don't need to worry too much about learning how to program in this particular series as well. And of course, we're going to touch on data types. We're going to need to use those in our application. But again, it's all going to come clear as we work through this particular series. OK, then. So what will you learn then? That's a key thing. So we're going to build this database mobile application together from scratch. Now, this is a mobile build series. OK, so this is not basing this on the web, although the techniques that you can you are learning here, of course, certainly some of the UI techniques you can quite easily apply to sort of web based applications. But we're going to specifically focus on the mobile side. And we're going to look at all of the key concepts of Flutterflow using native native features. So we're not going to kind of go off into the, the open world here and try to use other kind of products along the way, other than some tools in order to support our build. But we're not really, we're going to focus primarily with inside Flutterflow in this particular series. And of course, I've got here, that's about combination extension to fundamentals covered in season one. Again, yes, we're going to build on what we learned in season one in season two of this particular series. So hopefully it will just drill home a little bit more more of some of the concepts that we're applying. And I'm also going to introduce, as always, um, some of my own best practices throughout. So um, certainly if you are, are, are learning the product and you want to kind of just sort of be guided by maybe some more sort of more regular, more sort of standard sort of things that, that I certainly like to do, then I'll certainly put those in this particular series as well. And um, like I said, it's delivered in a very, very walkthrough style, so you can pick up and put down however you need. And um, the great thing about this particular series, of course, is that the project stages are provided along the way as well. So as we move through 
through the episodes you'll be able to then load up the kind of the stage that we're at as a clonable project so you can continue on at that point or you can cross check your work that's something I like to do with everything I do with inside all of my content with inside my YouTube channel is I always provide you with the the projects to use this is nothing behind any paywall or anything like that I'm very very open about the material that I provide everybody um, because at the end of the day we're all here to learn right so um, it, it should be free on YouTube for you to be able to then uh, to use but of course you want to become a member of the Academy as well then I've got all of that stuff in there as well and as I said there at the, at the end there the final project is available in the last episode of season two but of course I do encourage you to walk through and learn because the only way you are going to learn is by doing but of course you've got the final final project at the end if you do get stuck along the way then you can refer to that as well as a good reference point so next up then what are we going to focus on so we're going to construct the user interface together step by step so yeah sure some parts of the series is going to be a little bit slower in its progress but the whole idea is we just build all of this stuff together and you can see exactly how I'm applying it and of course we'll walk through sort of page and com component interaction as well that's really quite important as we sort of work with multiple pages and multiple components within inside our application I'll be able to kind of demonstrate those and we'll, we'll build those live in this particular series and then the important thing there is together we'll implement the SQLite database for, uh, for data storage so we're going to kind of use a, a third party tool here to kind of build out kind of the database file that we need and then we're going to then build that and move that into Flutterflow so we can then use that with inside our project and of course we're going to learn how to then query that data and interact with that data and I'll talk you through the steps involved in that and as I said before we're going to promote reusability within the application as well so there is elements that get used on more than one location that will kind of promote that with inside our application and then the bottom one is the most important I'm here to help you learn Flutterflow with minimal complexity I think that's really important because we don't want to be confused by other kind of bits that's happening around the edges let's just keep it right in Flutterflow let's build out your knowledge and then of course you can then take those skills and then you can then apply that in however or whatever projects that you would uh, you, you need to apply it to so here is the application that we're going to build and the key thing here is to remember is that you can use the free version of Flutterflow in order to do everything that we're doing here um, I do encourage you though to download Flutterflow as an application of course because we're going to be using local run features but I'll touch on more on that a little bit later but here it is here is the my goals application just a couple of screenshots here so it's got some uh, some nice sort of animations obviously I'm showing you a static image here but it's got some nice image animations in, in there included and I'll demonstrate those to you shortly on what the, the actual application running so we've got a couple of different pages going on here we've got kind of like the the goals page here and then we've got like we can do updates do all of the, the create read update and delete um, functionality of a typical type of application well, let's say we've got some nice um, sort of some colors being used here as well it's got a sort of light and dark mode theme and we've got different a number of different pages and components is making up the whole of this particular application but the whole idea is this application can track a series of goals and then you can have tasks associated with those goals and of course the goals themselves will track the completion of those particular tasks now the great thing about this particular application what I really like about it is that if um, it really does set the scene for how you perhaps would like to build your own projects with inside Flutterflow. You may not want to uh, connect to external databases or anything like that. You may just want to build something for your own use. This is a great series for you to kind of get up and running really fast with inside Flutterflow. So that is the application. Um, just some additional learning as well, of course, along the way. Um, there's future seasons that I'm going to be producing with inside the No Code Academy or on YouTube, of course. So please do become a subscriber or a member of the Academy. And um, of course, I'll be pushing all of my content out there as well. So of course, I'll be building on more seasons as we go in the future. But hopefully that kind of sets the scene to everything that we are doing in this particular series. And of course, there's a little bit about me as well. I'm a Flutterflow ambassador for Europe. Super proud to have that title very much enjoy um, sort of teaching and educating around Flutterflow um, I, I, I love the product very much and um, I really do get quite excited by how everybody else is using Flutterflow now in the community and so we can uh, all learn together and uh, and yeah of course an educator of the year um, that's something I'm super proud of and I hope to continue in future years so that's pretty well much it that's a wrap for this introduction let's now move into the next video